much for taking your time to join us again. Um, in our last session, we, we were speaking about the necessity of an all-encompassing revival hitting our shores and changing the political, social, and economic landscape of our country. I cannot wait for that because uh, I think only the hand of God can get us to a place where we want to be as a country. There's a lot of division amongst us and, and, and I, I think while those divisions are not impossible, um, they're going to take a while to resolve themselves um, uh, unless of course the hand of the Lord um, is able to come upon us and to assist us in, 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 in fast-tracking the process, accelerating the process, accelerating nation building, accelerating reconstruction, accelerating reconciliation, accelerating the rebuilding of this nation. Not only this nation, the continent, the beloved continent of Africa, of Africa, excuse me. Now I'm going to read again from Ezra chapter 9 verse 9 once again because in our last interaction um, there was um, the, the scripture we, we, we had read. For we were slaves yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our bondage. But he extended mercy to us in the sight of the kings of Patia, to revive us, to repair the house of our God, to rebuild its ruins, to give us a wall in Judah and Jerusalem. I, I, I am fully persuaded that um, our country is ripe for a great move of God. Because one of the things that necessitate a great move of God is, is for the people to cry out unto God. And when people cry out unto the Lord, the Lord hears. I mean, you know, in, in Egypt when the Israelites cry out unto the, cried out to the Lord, the Lord heard from heaven. Yeah. And he came down to rescue. He came down to set free. He appointed a leadership in the name of Moses, in the name of Aaron. He appointed a leadership to lead his people to a better place. So when God revives, when God sets free, when God liberates, he does it in a strategic way. He, he, he chooses the leadership that he wants to use. And may God do so in our country. May God facilitate a new crop of leadership, a new leadership that is going to embrace the agenda of God, that is going to do that which is in the heart of the Lord for this nation. Amen. May God ordain for us a new type of leadership. A leadership that is prepared to hear what it is that must be done for this nation in this season. Amen. And again, um, Ezra um, is, 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 is saying here, even though we were slaves, the Lord caused us to have favor with the kings of Persia, so that they were 
able to assist us. They were able to support the efforts of rebuilding the house of the Lord. I mean, the temple was a massive project. I mean, the rebuilding of the temple was a massive project. You, you, you'll appreciate that it took years and years. I think the temple of Solomon took 49 years to build. So the, the building of a temple is a massive project. And therefore, slaves could not just undertake that massive project and just do it on their own. Some backup, financial backup needed to, to be found so that this project could, could, could be done. And therefore, in our prayer of revival, we must pray for God to, 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 to unleash economic resources, make them available to his people, so that what needs to be done can be done, so that what must happen should happen. You cannot divorce prayer from revival. Revival from prayer. Do not be discouraged and say, we've been praying for a long time, but it doesn't seem that anything is happening. Well, I'm here to tell you that something is happening. The heavens are hearing and the heavens are responding. And soon and very soon, the hand of the Lord is going to be upon this nation. And the hand of the Lord is going to manifest itself in a great way upon this nation. I'm going to read from Psalms 119, verse 25. And it reads as follow. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. You know, when the people of God are, are desperate, and when the people of God are, face, are faced with challenges they cannot resolve, then their crying out to the Lord becomes their salvation. Their crying out to the Lord becomes their redemption. The Lord begins to move in their midst because they've cried out to the Lord. It was the same case with the Israelites in Egypt. It was the same case with the Jewish people in Persia under Queen Esther. And it is the same case with us in South Africa. We will cry out to the Lord. The Lord will hear us. And the Lord will move on our behalf. And the Lord will move to fix this nation. But we must understand that the word of the Lord says, revive us according to your word. Revive us according to your word. So one of the things that become important for the revival to really arise is not just prayer. It is correct teaching. When we correctly, accurately divide the word of truth, revival becomes the end product of that particular process. When we correctly and accurately divide the word of truth, Revival becomes the byproduct of that process. And so I pray that in every local church there may be an accurate and correct dividing of the word of truth so that the people of God become aware of what God is doing 
they become aware of the intentions and the agenda of the heavens for the national transformation of this country. Because the Lord is intent on changing this nation. And the Lord is going to change this nation. There is no two ways about it. There is no doubt about it. The Lord is going to change this nation. And the Lord is going to touch and transform every sphere of human activity in South Africa, whether it be economic, whether it be political. You see, there are here is how revival can change a political system. When there is revival, there's a concentrated outpouring of the spirit. And when there is revival, there's an outpouring of revelation. Revelation knowledge in terms of God speaking forth to his people. And the people of God are impacted and changed by the message of revival. They are changed by the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Spirit. May God release his power upon his people. May we experience an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And when, when the people are changed, the pool from which we draw our leaders becomes the pool that has been touched by revival. And therefore suddenly we have Russia's leadership. And suddenly in power we have people who fear God. A heart that has been touched by the power of God is a heart that has been delivered from, from greed. And therefore, you are able to share from your resources. <laughs> you are able to give away some of the things you have. Why? And therefore, God can instruct anybody to give anything to anyone at any time. And therefore, the whole thing of economic transformation and the economic redistribution and the whole thing of wealth distribution becomes easy when the hearts of God, when the hearts of the people have been touched by the power of God. And therefore, this nation needs revival. Because revival will then catalyze the national transformation that is so needed in our country. It will catalyze the economic transformation that is so needed in our country. But we must understand that we must pray right. I mean the word of God, 1 John chapter 5, I think it's verse 14. Here is what the word of God says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. Now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. In other words, We've got to learn to, play, to pray according to his will. That is the most effective way of praying. 
to pray according to his will. In other words, we pray from the prophetic. We pray following the prophetic calendar. We pray out of discernment. We discern what the season is. And then we pray accordingly. Not only that, we must also teach from discernment. We must also teach with prophetic clarity. When we teach, we teach. I understand that all of the scriptures must be taught. That is for sure. That is true. But from time to time, the Lord will, 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 will want us to focus on certain themes. And he will want us to really conscientize the saints on certain themes. Why? Because that is what he wants us to understand as his people. And he is facilitating how we pray. He wants to impact how we pray. He wants to impact our planning so that we plan accordingly. Because when the Lord teaches us, and then we begin to understand that here is God's will for this particular season. We are able to, pr to, to plan appropriately. We are able to adjust ourselves to say here is what God has said is his will for the next two, three years, four, five years. It's a very important thing for us to understand. And therefore, um, what we teach is very much important because revival cannot break until we begin to teach accurately. We begin to say, here is what God is doing. Here is what God wants us to do. In Jerusalem, if the apostles had continued to teach Moses and not teach grace under Christ, I can assure you, revival would not have broken in Jerusalem. Revival would not have broken in Samaria. The Bible is very clear as to what Philip was teaching. It tells us I think it's, it's Acts chapter 8. It tells us he taught about Christ. He taught about the kingdom of God. Why? Because the content of their teaching was very critical in the agenda that the Spirit of God wanted to uh, to. to to push across um, um, across the nations of the world. So if they had been taking the gospel of Moses, I can assure you, the Holy Spirit would not have anointed them. So the outpouring of the Spirit is always linked to accurate teaching. And so I'm, I'm appealing to you not to lose heart. Continue to pray. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord. Continue to ask the Lord to revive us, to rebuild this country to rebuild our communities, to rebuild this continent. We need that grace. We need that grace. We need that grace. Let justice flow like a river and righteousness like a mighty stream. Unkulungulalungi say. Activities in the Bezetu. 
Ngezibo nagaliso nezi mangali so Lord we bless your name Lord we bless your name Lord we bless your name We are fathers and ngezibo nagaliso nezi mangali so Eh father zele me sikuluma And the reason why the Holy Spirit cannot confirm with signs and wonders the things we say is because some of the things we teach and preach are not even sentient of the Spirit as is tatana kumoya as is zwanga enkosini Thank you Father we give you praise we give you honor And thank you for what you are about to do in this nation. Yes. Thank you for the overflow and the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. And thank you. Ogodi Ngos, you are about to touch the hearts of your people. You are about to cause us to experience an economic revival, a political revival, a social revival that we have never seen before. You are about to rearrange and reorganize this nation. Reorganize it according to your will. Reorganize it according to your purposes. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Please join us again in our next session. Thank you for watching. The Lord bless you. Thank you.